Now, will you notice? Now, this I say, that every one of you, Seth, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. Oh, was that a nice little thing they had going here in the church. Now, there were some there that followed Paul. They were proud pupils of Paul. And then there were those that followed Apollos. They were adoring admirers of Apollos. And then there were some that liked Simon Peter, Cephas. And they were the chummy cult of Cephas. And just look at these men for a moment. We don't have but a moment. Paul, we know, I think, more about him and Cephas than any other. He was intellectual. He was brilliant. He was courageous, but apparently not attractive physically. But those that who love the Word of God love Paul. Now, Simon Peter, he was fiery. He was rugged. He was weak at first, but he was a rugged preacher of the gospel. Great heart, very emotional. Then there was Paulus. He was one of the great preachers of the apostolic church who was not an apostle. He's never been given much recognition. He was a great preacher. I think he probably was the Billy Graham of that day. Now, these men were all strong personalities, and they never made the divisions. They all contended for the faith together. They maintained the unity of the Spirit, and they all three exalted Jesus Christ. But the members of the church there at Corinth, they were making the divisions. Now, here's this little group. They say, oh, we love Brother Paul. He's so spiritual. And another says, well, I love Simon Peter because he pounds the pulpit and he's evangelistic. And the others said, oh, I love this man, Apollos. He soars to the heights and he reaches the multitude. Did you know all three of them were God's men? (laughs) But the church in Corinth was all divided because of this. And so Paul's going to talk to them about it. And he's going to show them that the centrality of Christ is the answer to the factions and fractions that you have in the church today. And that's the only solution, my friend. Until men and women are willing to come to the person of Christ, there'll be no solution. Then, actually, there was a fourth group there. And that fourth group, they were saying, an eye of Christ. Now, they actually were not really putting Christ first. But they were the super-duper spiritual group. And very frankly, they, I think, were the worst group of all. That's just my private opinion. And as a result, they made of Christ a little cult. And they had their little clique in the church. They excluded other believers. They were spiritual snobs, by the way. That's exactly what I would say that they are. And so we have these four groups. And there was no reason for there to be this division because you and I are living in a day when the church is being destroyed from the inside. The problems are not on the outside today. For instance, the pulpit has long since been destroyed by the liberals. And that'll destroy a church any time when a liberal gets in the pulpit. You go around Sunday night and at the midweek service, see what they have out. And then there's the pew today, and that's where they stir up strife. Begin to gather around a man, and the church fights have done more damage to the cause of Christ than alcohol, communism, and worldliness. And you find many churches there doing what they did in the mountains of Kentucky and Tennessee. They're feuding and a-fussing. You probably have heard that old corny song about the Martins and the Coys. They were reckless mountain boys, and they took up family feuding when they'd meet. They would shoot each other quicker than it took your eye to flicker. They could knock a squirrel's eye at 90 feet. Oh, the Martins and the Coys, they were reckless mountain boys. But old Abel Martin was the next to go. Though he saw the Coys a-coming, He'd hardly started running, for a volley shook the hills and laid him low. After that, they started out to fight in earnest, and they scarred the mountains up with shot and shell. There was uncles, brothers, cousins. They say they bumped them off by dozens. Just how many bit the dust, it's hard to tell. 
Oh, the Martins and the Coys, they were reckless mountain boys. At the art of killing, they became quite deaf. They all knowed they shouldn't do it, but before they hardly knew it, on each side they only had one person left. Well, may I say to you, that sounds pretty corny and very silly, but it's sure a picture of many churches today, right on the inside of them there, feuding and a-fighting and a-fussing. And that is exactly what they were doing in the Corinthians.